Hi everybody! Yes, I'm bringing all the series back, yes! Oh, sorry. <laughs> I have way too much energy for 10 o'clock at night. <laughs> yes, I am finally back with an inconsistent bookworm. And yes, I know it's not over the book I said I was reading. I have to kind of explain that before I can explain why I was reading this instead. I don't know if my... Oh, I'm just covering up the name of the author. But... I actually like Bentley Little. I've read a, I've read a few of his short stories. I liked him very well. I thought, okay, that was actually pretty good. That was actually creepy. Or, ooh, that was really good imagery. I have read at least one of his books. One of his full-length novels. One of his early works, I believe. I think it was called The Revelation or something like that. It was pretty much about this town where this evil is coming and this one witch doctor pretty much is the only way to stop it. Short, short and sweet. Um, the story was simplistic and it also hurt that it was kind of had a little bit of the cliches you'd expect. But it got to its point fairly quickly. It got moving very well. And I enjoyed most of what happened to it. I thought it was fairly creepy for what it was. <sighs> then I decided to read The Walking. And everything I read should have told me not to. Because this book, it was just uh, such a drag. I couldn't get past 100 pages of it. I mean, just so little happened throughout it, it felt like. I just couldn't put myself into the book at all. And I just couldn't care about any of the characters. I couldn't care about any of their dilemmas or anything. And because of that, I couldn't finish it. I mean, I have it seen over here somewhere. I can't figure out where. So I can get rid of it. And I just couldn't push myself through the novel anymore. I'm like, this is just so boring. This is so bland. This is beyond the blank, stupid cliches. This is actually just straight up bad story writing. And that's the problem with walking. I couldn't finish the damn thing. <clears throat> I hate to be one that was like, ah, oh, it's one of the worst works ever. I just think it was a very poorly thought out book. Maybe it gets better at the end. I've heard that it does get better if you can stick through it. But most people can't. I am one of those. So, I was like, well, fuck it. <laughs> I decided, since I'm wanting to get back into Cirque de Freak books, because I missed these when I was a teenager. Meaning, missing them, I never read them. They came out, I want to say, in the mid-2000s. Or early 2000s. I'm sorry. I have no idea of concepts, concepts of time. Yeah, this actually came out in 2000. 2002's copyright on it, so... <clears throat> yeah, it came out right when I was about to leave high school. So it would have been something that appealed to me. And I actually like the movie. I think the movie is very flawed. It has its problems. It wants to be really dark, but at the same time it's held back by the fact that it's supposed to be based on a young adult, ser or young adult novel series. So because of that, they want to make this something a lot more tamed and it didn't help that it pretty much was only created because hey Twilight got famous said so Harry Potter so let's do this and, ugh. but I actually liked the first book even though I felt like just as it was getting started it ended the second book I thought was a much better continuation of it I believe I already did a review of it or something like that I don't know if not, I'll just tell you, I like the first book, or second book. I liked it a lot more than the first book. There's something that I'm still a little fuzzy about when it came to the second book trying to remember, because I try to space out from the series, so that way I'm not just reading, oh, a bunch of Star Trek, a bunch of Cirque de Freak books, or anything, because otherwise I'm going to just mush them all together and I'm going to forget it, or I'm going to get franchise fatigued. And that's not a good thing. I mean, it's bad. I have Warner Brothers Entertainment Universe for D for DC Group fatigue already. We're two movies in. Technically three if you want to include Man of Steel. Forget. I always forget that abortion happens. Blech. But, 
I was, like I said, I was kind of fuzzy on it, but I did remember that there was this one kid who eventually befriended the main character who happens to be named Darren. And bad things happened because of this. It felt like it started to put push forth the mythos a little bit more and also talk more about the Cirque de Freak, which is actually really cool. And I was like, all right, this is very interesting. But again, like the first book, it kind of ended a little early, it felt like. This, the third book, Tunnels of Blood, pretty good. There are problems still with this story. There is this love story that goes on between the main character, Darren, and this other girl. Her name is Debbie. Other girl. He's actually a guy. Duh. <laughs> but there's like this little love story that's going on between them. And it's not that it's bad. It just doesn't feel like it's super important. And really, at best, by the end of the entire book, it just becomes a simple kind of plot point to help defeat the bad guy of the book. Because there is a bad guy throughout it. But yeah, there's that. That's kind of a bad thing. We also, very early on, we're taken away from the circus, which poses a few problems. The circus was a very interesting setting, and I do get you don't want to get people too attached to one place, especially since it's pretty much is supposed to be playing upon the old like circus ways of how they did things. They're very, you know, they're pretty much Romany in the best way of saying things. They journeyed around from place to place. And I get that you don't want to, you want to kind of help give that feel off. But at the same time, it feels like it's a little too early in the series. I would have liked if we had more time to spend at the circus. Maybe some new performers or delving more into different performers, like their backstories and all that. Especially the one main kid in this. I, I'm afraid I can't remember his name. Not Darren, but... His friend, the Snake Boy, <laughs> in all essence, who, who he actually, Ephra, that was his name. I just turned to a page, hey, there's his name. <laughs> it would have been neat to delve more into them. I know they delved into him a little bit in the second book. I would have liked more of that, which is not a bad thing. In fact, that seems like it's a negative compliment in a way. I am saying I want more of these characters. And... Yes, there's still a little bit of the child stuff here and there. Not really child, but young adult things. Like, it feels like it wants to be a little bit more violent than it is. And then it's also offset by the fact this book gets jarringly adult at points. Like, there's some actual cursing throughout it. There's, like, some hells, some dams. There's not as much as me, but, I mean, you ain't gonna get that everywhere. And then... You get, like, just this goofy stuff between Darren and this girl, Debbie. It's not that it's bad. None of it's bad. That's the one thing I can say about Darren Shan as writer. He's not a bad writer at all. He is a good, and even at his worst of points, he's just a slightly, um, not really lazy. That's not the word I like to use. I would want to use to describe him. He just feels like he almost wants to take sometimes an easier route with things. Mostly just because he wants you to be able to visualize it with your own head. And sometimes he does that by using not as much adjectives. He's not quite as descriptive as you would hope. But that is kind of a fault that can go throughout many different young adult writers. And really, he it, his non-descriptiveness, though helps in certain points really with this if I'm not mistaken the major reason why he takes that kind of a route is if I'm not mistaken he's not a he's not American if I'm saying Darren Shan he's actually from either UK or he might even be from Ireland you know he's obviously from somewhere other than years because we all know that you know not every great writer comes from America we'd like to pretend it but you know we're assholes that way <laughs> But him kind of having this non-description of a city, like it's just, it's a city landscape. It allows it to be able to easily be a London. It allows it to be a Dublin. It allows it to be an Edinburgh. It allows it to be a New York City. It allows it to be an LA almost. Well, maybe not quite in LA because it's like, it's snowing. 
that's not really an LA thing. Maybe like a Chicago. And that's really what I kept picturing in my head was a very kind of Chicago-esque looking kind of city and all that. But yeah, that's the biggest faults. Other than that, we get more introduction to more vampire mythos. We get to see some upgrading of chemistry between Mr. Creepsley and Darren. I think I might be pronouncing his name incorrectly, but... Or Creepsley, I'm not sure. Pretty much, if you've seen the movie, he is... Oh, God, what's his name? It's gonna not bug me. <laughs> John C. Riley. John C. Riley's character. Well, I thought he actually... Every time this character's talking and how they've kind of described him, I actually kind of see John C. Riley as it. Especially as kind of just grizzled, kind of forlorn person in a way. Eh, it's John C. Riley, really. <laughs> yeah. We get more of them interacting together, Darren Krebsley, which leads to some really good character bits with them. And then on top of everything, you actually get kind of a legitimate threat to them. Um, a vampanese who they have now discussed and said that vampires are people who will just drink a little bit of blood, just to sustain themselves, and bam, they go on about their lives. Vampanese are actually vampires who drink all the blood. They believe it is their right. And they actually kind of speak about it in a way that makes sense. Like, the vampires don't much care for the vampanese, but it's not like a hate. It's just more of like, it really causes problems for us dudes. <laughs> Which makes sense it, how it's explained and also when you actually kind of think about it. It's like, yeah, you would get upset with them because they are drawing more attention than you need. But it's not so much that you're going to hate them because they're still just part of your people in all essence. Now, it's an interesting kind of little conundrum that's brought up. Oh, yeah, um, you actually get a... Like I said, a legitimate villain, this Vampanese who's slowly going mad because he explains like, oh, if they drink too much blood, they'll just slowly drive them insane, which kind of doesn't exactly make a lot of sense. They don't explain it very well. <laughs> when you have like 200 some odd pages, you can only explain so much. And yeah, that is the big problem I would say with this novel. It's 224 pages. It feels like it goes by like that. It's a quick and easy read, but much like many of the different Cirque du Freak books, it feels almost incomplete. I do wonder, did Darren Shan have these ideas for these stories, put them together, but didn't quite understand always how to wrap them up a little bit better. You know, how to elongate them or add something of substance. And, you know, just anything. It feels almost a little too quick. That might be a problem on Darren Chan. It might be a problem on his editors. Or it might be on the publishing company. Maybe Darren Chan originally wrote, like, six books. And they're like, alright, we're going to cut them all in half. And here we now have 12. I don't know. I'm not going to jump to conclusions. I'm just going to state that it's like, it does, the book does feel like many of his other books. It feels a little rushed at times. But it's not as bad as the first one in terms of like, oh, we got to finish this up. And also, it doesn't feel like, like me throwing out the, oh, it was cut in half and they made, it was six books cut in half. Really, it doesn't feel like that. That is just me saying, oh, maybe that's a reason why. I don't know. I doubt it. It's not like Cassandra Clare where it felt like the last book of her original Mortal Instrument trilogy. I read all three of those. I was like, I have not read the fourth or the fifth one, I think, that just came out a little while ago. Mostly because it said it was a trilogy. I'm going to keep it to that. And only that, but the third book was really not good. Third book is like, um, yeah, we don't have a story. And that's the reason why I really believe that really she wrote two books or maybe one pretty long book they cut up, and then they're like, all right, well, here, we're going to cut this art book and make you a trilogy. And she's like, well, this other one's not enough to make a book. We'll add stuff to it. There, throw stuff. <laughs> that didn't happen here, not as far as I can tell. I think Darren Shan might be a little bit of a younger writer, at least when he wrote these. I mean, 16 years ago, whenever or the series originally started. He pretty much put out a book a year for a while. In fact, he sped up. 
but I think just he was a younger writer because there is some certain little things that you can kind of see from a younger writer who's not quite as experienced. But for early attempts and everything, it's so damn good. I'm still enjoying it. I'm enjoying it enough to keep reading the series. If you have been curious about the Cirque du Freak series and you're not sure, maybe like the first book kind of, you're like, eh, I'm not really sure. I will say it does pick up. The second book is still probably the best out of these three that I've read, but this third one is a close second at least. It's not like, well, it's something I read. Which is always a good thing. You don't want to be like, oh my god, that's just oh, so terrible. But yeah, if you can go ahead and get to the second book, you'll enjoy it. And I'd say keep reading the series. I'm still going to go ahead and get the four, or read the four series. I've actually... Funny tale... The reason why it took me so long to eventually get to this from the second one, it all has to do with the fact that whenever I first got the first book, I was like, all right, I'm going to read this. And then I was reading them, like, all right, I'm interested enough to continue reading the rest of the series. I started picking them up. I couldn't find two and three. I found four, five, six, seven, ten, and twelve in like one go. I eventually found, um, I want to say nine, and I still couldn't find three or two. I'm like, where are the rest of these books? I just want two books, and I'm done. I can get the rest of this. Oh, eventually I found them. Oh, God, it took so long. So, you'll probably see more regular updates on the series. If I get to a book that I'm not going to have much joy, I'll probably still finish it, because these are a quick read. I mean, even the more painful parts, I was like, oh, this I'm not kind of enjoying this as much. It was like a page or two, and then I'm like, oh, I'm back into stuff I want to read more about. So, hey, so, Cirque du Freak, Tunnels of Blood, pretty good. I don't want to go back to the circus, but at least we are promised that in the next one. And, hey, the next book's called Vampire Mountain, so that's what's kind of neat. I just hope they're, I just hope we don't keep on this track of what this seemed to introduce, which is, hey, here's a bad guy, deal with it there. It's two earned pages. Find a way to deal with this bad guy. Hope we just keep building on Mythos and all that. So, there you go. That's my inconsistent bookworm. Though, I will warn you, you're about to see another one here in just a little bit. Because I was a little busy this past weekend. And, that, and you will see why beyond the other two videos I've already put out this weekend. Or this week. So, hey, I will... See you all in like five minutes, so see you next and consistent bookworm. <laughs> Bye, everybody. <laughs>